Lord who created this beautiful earth and who keeps covenant and steadfast love forever. Good morning. I hope you all enjoyed this wonderful week with all the weather changes that brought it and I hope you all enjoyed last week's Mother's Day service, Mother's Day, that you all celebrated the wonderful women in your life and that you gave them a virtual far away or a hug when you met them and that you said how wonderful and how grateful you are that they are in your lives. And today we have again a special service where we are honoring our graduates, where we have Senior Sunday. And all over the United States, there are seniors now graduating in a different way than in the normal way. And we want to honor them a little bit more than usual. And um, so you all have this booklet if you haven't printed it out, but it's online available. And uh, they filled out the graduates some questionnaires so that we get to know them a little bit better. And um, if you need them, if you know them, call them and write a note to them and say, how proud you are of their efforts and then we celebrate them a little bit more than usual because they won't walk the stage or they won't have the usual celebration they usually have so let's make this special if you know a senior reach out to them and make their day their graduation their achievements a little special so we do this this sunday and in this service and if we're ready let us all join our hearts in the call to worship Come to worship, people of God, with praises on your lips. Even when we are feeling isolated and fearful, we can glorify the one who holds our hands in our loneliness. Come into the presence of the one who makes holy every place, every space, holy and sacred. Even where we continue to stay safe apart from one another, the doors of grace are flung wide open for us. Come and hear the stories of the one who loves you. Wherever we are, in living rooms, on laptops, on the streets, or in grocery stores, we will sing our songs and tell those stories of the peace and of the hope which are ours. Come, let us celebrate the one, the one who does not know any boundaries or limits. We are ready to sing and praise our Lord. Amen. So let us sing and praise our Lord with our, not our first in which usually comes, but we are now going into the prayer of adoration. <laughs> Please continue to pray with me. We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only to listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. We are here to worship our God who does not know any boundaries or limits. Amen. Now, let us sing our first hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him. Let us all join into that song and lift our hearts and our voices up to the Lord. Thank you. 
listen to the prayer of confession. Oh my God, you have set before us the path that we have wandered in our own to try to find our own ways. Sometimes we are like toddlers and we hear you call and come back. Other times we are children testing boundaries, ignoring your call until fear finally makes us look back. And still other times we are full of youthful rebellion, demanding to be cut loose and set free, not knowing how much we still need to seek your wisdom and guidance. But most of all, too often we think we are adults and have figured it all out on our own, knowing our own way, only to stumble and stray so far. Remind us, parental God, that we are always your children, that we are never fully grown up in your sight, that we always have much to learn. Help us to seek you every day, to acknowledge that we need your wisdom and guidance, and help us to return to the path and walk with you. In the name of Christ, who is our companion on this journey of faith, we pray. Amen. In Titus 3 it says, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God of our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we have maybe done, but according to God's mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit God poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, having been justified, by this grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This saying is for sure. So brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news. By God's grace and God's grace only, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Religious. 
For as I pass along and observe the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as an unknown God, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by people, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and everything. And he made from one every nation people to live on all the face of the earth, having determined a lot of periods and the boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God and the hope that they might feel after him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being the God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or presentation by the art and imagination of people. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now God commands all people everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. By a man who he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all people by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is a special Sunday, or it's Senior Sunday, where, as I said at the beginning already, we are honoring our seniors. Well, not only seniors. Let's say we have graduation Sunday. We also have in our little booklet here uh, graduates who already graduated from college and pursuing uh, other education, further education, masters, PhDs, um, wherever or whoever right now graduated and moved from one step to another we salute you and we say wonderful achievement and we hope that or i hope that somewhere along the way you feel like that you did an incredible job and that you celebrate your achievements even the circumstances are different i hope that you feel that you did an incredible job and um and it took a lot of work and effort to get there where you were at now talking to the seniors I don't know when you all who graduated from high school look back, it was a special moment where somehow you went from being a child and a young teenager feeling like an adult. At least it was for me this way, where it was the first step into my own life, where I had to decide what's coming next. And that is kind of scary because you don't really know what's next. And the decision you make is your decision, you know, before your, your parents ushered you somehow along the way, and they will continue to do that. But now we had to decide with college or working or taking time off, what's coming next. And I see that some of our seniors, they're going to college and some are going into the military and, and some are taking off for a year, figuring things out and doing volunteer work. And all that is wonderful. All that is good for the next step. And whatever that next step is, and for every graduate, what that next step is, is unknown. So when I look back and I graduated from high school, I took time off. I took a year off to figure things out because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. And the next step was unknown as for everybody else. So what we do when we go into an unknown future, when it is such a big step like graduation, we go there and observe, right? That's when we're going to college, to military, to a volunteer place. We go and observe and do what is told to us to do before we go in our own action. We observe and look, try to understand all the new things. And what we also do as human beings, we try to see the things that are familiar to us. So do they in college, 
work the way I used to work to in high school? Are the learning patterns the same? What kind of books are they using? Am I already familiar with certain topics? Did I hear this already? Um, all those we try to see also in the volunteer or workplaces when we not go to college or we're going into the work field. Um, how do they work? Am I already familiar with the work? How do they clean? Can I use my cleaning skills or my counting skills or my waiting skills? Somehow we try to connect what we already learned with the things that we observe. And sometimes things are hidden. So at first it looks like it's unfamiliar and then we get to know and we dig a little bit deeper and all of a sudden it, we see that whatever we learned before we can apply and we can put it into action, different, but still familiar. So maybe what, how we learned, the way our learning pattern was in high school is maybe not quite the same like in college, but we can use some certain things and can apply this and we can put it in action and then college is no longer this gray field of not knowing how to do it and it becomes a way and familiar to do it. So whatever we learn, maybe not one-on-one, -on -one, but translate it into action. And here we come in with our text. We have Paul in Athens. And in Athens, he is actually there waiting for his friends to come to. He hadn't had a plan on a mission. He was there waiting and he was wandering around the Areopag and he was observing. He didn't know Athens before, so he was observing what is going on with this culture, all trying to figure things out. And what he observed is that the Greeks were very, very religious people. And um, we all came across the Greek mythology, so we all know something you know, about the gods, and maybe we mix this with the Roman gods. Yeah, no, I, sometimes I don't know which god is, belongs where. But we have this pantheon of 12 main gods, and then hundreds of hundreds of hundreds minor gods, semi-gods, something. And they all get worshipped. They all have shrines. We hear this in the text where uh, Paul says, shrine by people made. You know, they, they are everywhere. And they have days where you worship the big gods, and then you have days where you worship the minor gods. And those gods have all certain qualities and they're there for certain areas, either for the weather or for farming or for uh, stonework or woodwork. They have all their reason and purposes. And so depending on what area you're working, you're worshiping a different kind of God to make sure that this God is satisfied with you so that your work, your day is good. So now there is this shrine for this unknown God. And now we can think about the Greeks two ways. Either those Greeks are so fearful because they're worshiping so many gods and for so many different reasons and areas to make sure that their life is covered with a God and that they are protected somehow, that they're just afraid that they missed a God. And so they have this unknown God, just in case I missed one, you know, here is your shrine and I put some sacrifices down to make you happy. Or the Greeks were really smart, knowing that they have all those gods, but their knowledge of gods is limited, but that the gods are unlimited. So that there is this unknown God that goes beyond their imagination, beyond their limited human thinking. And this is like a space holder to allow that our human thinking can go beyond and that God is beyond that. So the Greeks knew their limitations. And this, so to say, uh, God, unknown God, is this God that goes beyond human limits. And Paul fills this with saying, this is the God that we proclaim. And Paul didn't go there to, to be on a mission. He observed and he saw that they were so religious. 
And I can just imagine, and that is also how we feel, we have to bring the good news to other people. That is our desire, bringing the good news to other people. And that's why Paul traveled around Europe, ancient Europe, trying to bring the good news. And here I see him walking down the streets of Athens, stumbling upon this unknown God, realizing I don't have to bring God to them. God is already there. The Greeks already have this space holder toward this God that's beyond human limits. This God that Paul knows. So he goes to an unfamiliar place and finds familiarity. Finds familiar places and translates this for the Athens, saying, you know, I have a God who forgives, who loves, who resurrects. And that is all new to the Athens. That's new to the Greek world. So there is this God that goes beyond the limitations of all the other gods that are there for certain purposes. And Paul fills this unknown God with this God that goes beyond human understanding. Because this God that we proclaim is not a God that fits into boundaries or limits. Though we try to do this because we hear enough on the radio and TVs, preachers proclaiming that their way is the only way to know God. And if we don't follow their way, we are doomed. And it's only them knowing exactly how to believe. We have enough of that going on. Where people try to own God that only one nation, one group, one religion owns God. But God cannot be owned. Because if we own God, we make God to an idol that is possessed or is a possession by us. But it's the other way around. We cannot possess God. We are God's children and we cannot own God. So we have to allow God be without boundaries and limits because if we put limits and boundaries on God and decide that God is not there or with them, we risk also to say that God is not with me. If we limit God's ability to be wherever God wants to be, there might be this chance that God is not with me, not here. But if we believe that God is God of creation and that God created everything and everyone, then God is everywhere to be found. I have to look and the other, like Paul, had to open his mindset and say, wow, God is already there. I just have to give words to this God and tell a story about this God, but God is already in this place. How much is this a game changer, knowing that we no longer have to bring the good news to others, but when we go to others, that we put their experience into words and actions. Like I have a friend, a wonderful friend. I have the best theological discussions with her, and she does not believe in God, she believes in energies and those energies heal and she gives healing sessions I call it Holy Spirit she calls it energy but we both believe in the power of healing and that God has for me God has this energy she calls it differently but we have a common sense there so when I talk with her, I share how I believe that this is God and that this is the Holy Spirit helping her to heal the people. And we have wonderful discussions there. I had another friend, he was in youth work with me while I was leading the youth group at my church back in Germany. And he was a vital person. He was there all the time, hands-on, helping and engaged 
doing the good work of the Lord in the community, helping others who couldn't do their own thing, bringing food to the to the people who couldn't get out, what we're doing right now a lot, right? Bringing food to the people who are not able to get out and bring it. And, and he was right there in the heart of social justice. Where I would say, I don't believe in God. But how can I say that God was not with him when I ever saw that God was in action in this person? And I know that you know those kind of people too, where they say, I don't believe in God, but you see God working in and through them. So how can we say just because the heart is not yet open for God in their lives, that God is not at work? How can we limit God there? God is everywhere we are. In the smile of a stranger we don't know, you remember those moments where you all of a sudden feel God touched your soul because somebody else did something to you for you. A hug that changed the world in this moment. And you didn't even know if this person is a faithful person or not. Or a letter, a good word written by somebody you know that is of different faith. And yet, you felt God speaks to you. And this person had the right words for you, what you needed to hear, to feel loved and cared for, feeling God's presence in your life. We have this experience where we experience God in places where we never thought we would because God is beyond limits and boundaries, with beyond our labels. And going back to our seniors and graduates and to everybody who is embarking on a journey unknown, which actually is everybody because we don't know what the next minute and future, the next morning brings. We can be sure that God is already there. So we don't have to worry if we have to bring God with us or where we are in our relationship with God, whether we are a doubter, a questioner, a curious, a somebody who doesn't want it to have anything to do with God or a faithful person. However, we feel related to God. It's not important for our step into the future because into the future God is already there and welcomes us there. This God, we don't have to worry. So seniors, if you're going into your adult future, uncertain, fearful, a little bit afraid, and if you say, no, I'm not, we all been there, and that's okay. Know that God is already there. Know that God is already waiting there for you and walks with you. And that this God that is beyond boundaries and limits loves you without boundaries and limits. And whatever you embark, Whatever you are going to and going through, God is with you. As God was with Paul, realizing in the new setting, God was already there. I cannot imagine how relieved Paul must have been, knowing that the good news on his shoulder was lifted so that he thought, I don't have to bring God to the others. God is already there, but what I bring are stories, are the stories of Jesus Christ, so that God comes to light in their lives, that God can shine there and is revealed to them that God is already there. So wherever we are on our journey, when we are going into our next future that is coming up right this now a second, you know that's God already there. And when we share our stories with others, our faith stories, we bring to light God and maybe open the doors for others to see how God works in them already. Because God is already there. God is already in their lives. And when we share our stories as Paul shared his story, we let God shine in this world. So Rhetorids, go into your future. Us, let us all go into our future.
future knowing that God is already there and that we bring our story so that we praise God in our lives. Amen. Jesus, the Spirit of truth, the truth of God. Because I believe, I trust, not blindly but open-eyed and bold, as a child climbing into the mother's lap, the truth of Jesus, the tr Spirit of truth, the truth of God. Because I believe, I serve, not as a slave that serves a tyrant, but like farmers reaping in harvest. The truth of Jesus, the spirit of truth, the truth of God.
We thank you that you let us walk into a future where we know and we can trust that you're already there, where you welcome us with open arms as your children. Make us understand that knowing that you are everywhere, that means that we have to treat everyone and everything as we treat you, with honor and respect, not hurtful, not disgraceful, not delivering pain or insults or destruction, but everything and everyone we should highlight your presence. And make us share with the world the wonderful stories we have with you so that you can shine in this world, that your light stands upon the hill and we bring this light and we make this light shine because you are already there. Make us see you wherever we go. We lift up all those seniors who are going into a future of adulthood, where they try to figure out what their next step is, where they feel whatever they decide has something to do with the greater future of their lives, what they want to do for a living, how they want to live, whether they stay home or they are going off to college, Maybe one day when the campuses are open again, doing online classes, figuring out how to finance college. Make them feel that you're with them and that you walk with them and that you lead them into their future. Maybe they are uncertain about you. Maybe they doubt you. Maybe they have questions. But make them feel that you're with them and that you're in their doubts, and that you are in their questions and that you're their answer, and that you're curious with them on this adventure of life. And all the other graduates that are already pursuing higher education, be with them as well, and celebrate their achievements, and let them see what their future entails, knowing that even that you are with them in their future, and that their future is bright, and that their dreams come true. Be with us as we walk into our future, not knowing what it will hold for us, but knowing that you're with us. So whatever comes our way, we know that we are held by your love, shielded by your mercy, and protected by your grace. There are so many who are in need of this love and mercy. We lift them up to you out loud or in silence. God, you heard, you heard us because you are where we are. So take care of the people who are dear to our hearts and everything else that is in our hearts and in our minds, we put in the one prayer that you taught us through your son, Jesus Christ, let us say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the moment where we have our offering plates here and we would go through the rows and ask for your offering. We do this and we would like to say thank you for sending your check and uh, continue to contribute to St. Paul's mission and work here in Nebo. But we still have to continue to do this. So please continue to give as you give, gave in the past. Let us all work on this so that when we are all coming together, we are celebrating and I can tell you, the fellowship hall is really coming along most beautifully. We just decided on the carpet and on the uh, wall color and everything. It will look beautiful. So we are off for great endeavors. So please continue to give. 
send in your money, give to the necessity pantry, give to our renovation of the fellowship hall. St. Paul's continues his and its work here in New York. Let us all join in prayer. Abandoned by hope, forsaken by others, left behind by those who said they loved them, there are orphans all around us, holy God. So may the gifts we offer be a home, a family, a rest, a respite for them and all the others around us. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. As already said, the Fellowship Hall is coming along most beautifully and I hope that soon we can see the results. But we are getting there, we are coming closer and it's really exciting to see the progress. And thank you to everyone who comes out to help. All those hands that do additional work here, uh, especially to the House of Property Committee who is here continuously to work hard uh, with the people who are doing the construction, working together. So this is all coming together. So a big thank you for everybody who is involved in this effort, the giver and the doer, everybody. Session is meeting this Tuesday, and uh, that will be a big part to discuss how we can come together at St. Paul's again, slowly, how we are opening our doors again so that we can come together as a community of faith, but doing this safe and sound. So uh, we are working on this. I know that some have already asked, when can we come together? We are working on it. Session is on it, so stay tuned. There will be news coming to you all very soon. With that being said, I wish you a wonderful Sunday before we are singing the last hymn. And I charge you, before we do the benediction, I charge you to think about a senior or a graduate and write them a note or send them some love their way. As I said, they celebrate a little bit different than maybe you did or your children did or whoever your neighbors let's make this special so come up with some ideas how we can make it special write a note send something call somehow um, so that they feel that they have also a day day or graduation day won't which they won't forget anyways because of the pandemic going on but that we make it pleasant for them as well now let us all lift our hearts up uh, one last time before we part and singing God be with you till we meet again.
Search for the God who is not far from each one of us. Offer to all who ask an account of the hope that is in you. Keep your conscience clear as you live with the commandments of love. And may God read your prayers with constant love. May Christ Jesus give you life 